Good day and welcome back to the next installment of our filter series where we look at the different types of filters and how to apply them to ensure a fast and good user experience for your users. What we have looked um, at thus far is the basic concepts of what is a filter as well as the different classes of a filter. Where we looked at also global filters specifically at extract filters and data source filters. In the current episode, we will be looking at accessible filters, what they are, as well as what is contained within them, and go into detail around the context filter. In the rest of the series, we will also be looking at um, further accessible filters, such as the dimension filter, a measure filter, the date filter, and then also what and how are cascading filters used. So do stay tuned. But before that, let's have a look at the data we are using. The data which we are looking at, as, as mentioned, is from the Kaggle website. And it's a CSV file, which is also available, obviously, um, from our site. And you'll find the, um, the link in the comment section. This is basically one CSV file with um, about 24,000 lines and a few columns. What you will notice in here as well is it ranges from the time that um, Kickstarter was um, brought to life back in April 2009 until January 2018 is the most recent data we have in there. Now, let's just run through each of the um, fields to understand what each of them are used for as we'll obviously be using this in, um, in our filtering as well. So firstly, we have the ID field, which is a unique identifier with the name of the project we also have a category as well as a main category in which this project is listed on the Kickstarter, project, uh, Kickstarter website. We have a country indicator. We'll notice that um, a lot of them are already are from the US, being a US um, entity, but um, there are also a number of other countries in there. We have a date that the project was launched on Kickstarter. So um, when we are starting to look for backers, we also have a deadline at, when, at, at the time at the, that the project closes the currency that the um, amounts are in. So we've got a goal and a pledged amount. So obviously goal is the, um, the amount or the target that needs to be reached for this project to be continuing and the pledged amount um, as well, which has already at this point in time when this extract was, was it made is the amount which has been received for this project or pledged as such. Then we also have a state with um, indicating the state of the project. It's not state as in geographical um, references, but more on the state. So we can see some of the project failed, some uh, have been successful, others are still live. And um, next we've got the total number of backers thus far, uh, also the goal and the pledged in USD amount, as we do have some in the local currency for these entities. And that's in essence the file which we'll take forward to the next section. So let us now focus on accessible filters. Well, um, these are so-called accessible due to the fact that you can access them from the sheets within your workbook, which distinguishes them obviously from your data source filter. Now, we will be focusing on three different ones, um, the context filter, the dimension filter, and the measure filter, and we'll jump right into the context filter. So a context filter can be seen as a sort of a global uh, filter not in the sense of the actual global filters we spoke about, but in fact that it applies globally for the specific sheet that you're working in. We could obviously also make it um, applicable to the other sheets and we'll look at an example shortly. However, it's normally just for the actual sheet that we're working in. So what, does ma what makes this quite nice as well is um, we can again trim down the number of records that we use in this specific sheet. So if we wanted to exclude a specific part of the business or a country or so forth, this is the one you want to use, um, seeing as all of the filters um, which are applied to your sheet is normally executed independently and then collated at the end. Now, if we use a context filter, it trims the data down that goes into the sheet and then only the remainder of the filters are applied. So quite handy in cutting down the additional records, speeding up your uh, processing at the end of the day as well. It has, however, also been said that um, it does not make sense. It does not make sense to uh, use a context filter if it's not going to reduce the number of records by ten percent or more. Well, the jury's still out on this one, and we shall test that also. 
We could also use the context filters to um, uh, for our users and make it interactive where they can select even the filter. So where we had the, the normal global filters being applicable and not accessible to our users, this could also be um, allowed for our users to, to use it. So how do we use it and how do we get it into our sheet? Let's dive right into Tableau. So we will just connect to our text file once again, which is the Kickstarter um, file from uh, which we've got from Kaggle and we can see it reads it in correctly. I will just be incorporating also just to make sure we did this in the previous um, video as well is just to take the country and remove um, the one that was from the incorrect platform to make sure that he's being excluded and then we are left with the remainder and we can just jump over into the sheet and we end up with where we well where we were at the end of the last video. What we also might note here is that state has already been interpreted by Tableau as a geographic role. And if we maybe let's just have a look at the roles, um, we will see that it's not actually a state such as um, in the case of a, um, a geographic role. It's more of the status. So we can see suspend. Um, there's a whole bunch of different ones in there. You can see canceled, failed, etc. So we can just change this. Uh, the geographic role is none. And also Tableau has already interpreted that as a hierarchy. We'll just remove that hierarchy as well. And our data is ready for the next step. Now, if we take, for instance, um, our scope being defined as a, um, we are only looking at the US right now. Um, potentially we might go into a bit more detail in other countries later on, but this part of the project is only for the United States. We can easily use a context filter for that purpose by taking the country, dragging it into filter. Tableau opens up a, a, you know, a box with all of the different um, uh, options and it first lists all the options or all the values within our data set. So what we'll do is we'll just click on select the US and say OK. Now maybe what I just wanted to show you as well, um, what we do have then is to say add to context. Now this is having a blue um, filter there. It means that um, it's a, you know, a dimensional filter, which we'll get to in the, in the upcoming tutorial. But for now we can see, let's maybe just put in another one. Um, if we look at, let's put in state and just say all, just for the purpose of this to show you what happens is if we have the country US and we want to make this a context filter, which means that it will only the only data that we can access within this specific sheet would be the context full the data that we've, we've selected in the context filter and if we select that you can see it turns gray and that means now that tableau has incorporated that that's the first filter which will be applied before any others such as state or um, you know are included in there so that's the distinguishing factor um, what makes an a um, a context filter different from the remaining ones. Now you can see it's quite easy to make this also um, interactive as we mentioned so maybe can maybe we can make this a single list if we want our user to select specific countries that they want we can do that. Normally it's not you won't generally use it but there might be certain cases in your projects that you you would require that. All right well maybe what we can do is as a next step also is to look at how do we make this applicable to different sheets. Let us maybe just create a quick um, visualization here and say, let's take the category. I will drag that into rows and let's take the number of records. It's always an easy one. And we just put it into a simple bar chart from high to low. So we can see the highest is product design, documentaries. Um, and actually, let's use main category because main category is the upper level. So let's do it like that. Our film and video being our, our highest with the number of records and in essence then the number of projects listed. So we can just drag also main category by holding the control button down into color just to make it look a little bit better. But what I wanted to show is if we duplicate this sheet now, um, if we duplicate this, we even remove this filter and we can just call this the, uh, let's rename it over here. This is the category bar chart and uh, let's call it the main category bar chart, the main category bar chart. And here we can call it the um, number of backers. Because if we take the number of backers, for instance, and put this into our visualization, obviously it changes quite a bit. 
but there is no filter applied here so this would be all of the the countries and the way we could check that is by putting country into color actually and yeah we can just add all members you can see it contains all of the countries even though we've selected us there so the context filter and this just proves that the context filter only applies to the sheet over here all right now if we wanted it um, and what we'll do is if we wanted it to um, apply across sheets Tableau has given us a couple of ways to uh, do that. Now, firstly, we will go here into apply to worksheets. If we filter, if we click on the filter, and there's a couple of options. By default, it only applies to this worksheet. We can also do selected worksheets, and we can select which we want, which we want, which ones we want, and obviously, if there are more, we can make a selective um, selection, if you want to call it like that, on the specific sheets that need to be updated with the filter. We could also go into apply all using this data source. Now, you can see we are using this only the one data source that we've got, and that is the one that we will, and any changes made to this data source or to this value in the data source will reflect across the rem remaining ones. And if I tick all using this data source, and we have a look at the other sheet, automatically it is changed here. Going back, changing this to Great Britain, going into the other sheet, it's updated once again. So pretty handy, especially when you're creating dashboards and so forth. Do be careful though, however, that um, you update the correct sheets and um, the correct ones. Um, the other option which we also have is to use related data sources and that is when you have multiple data sources and have created relationships between them. Um, this would then obviously just update the related data sources as well. So pretty handy. Um, context filters are great at cutting down the number of records and giving your user um, a much quicker experience in their dashboard. So as you've also seen, any new sheets which are added automatically will then be updated by this specific um, setting if you, do sh if you do choose all using this data source. All right, and that is our section on context filters. I hope you found this useful. Do stay tuned. We will be coming up with the dimension filters in the next video.